Now we come to the presentation of floors, and we're going to talk about basics. The basic guidelines. Now, in order to control the depth and speed and do know what's out there in that lake, you're going to have to do it by trolling and casting. It's an impossibility to do it by casting alone. Both are important. Trolling is sometimes frowned upon. It should not be. It's very important. Because it's your teacher when on the water. You look out at that, that great big rascal there and you say, well, where's the structure and where's the fish and how do I control my, my speed and everything in order to be at the right place at the right time fishing the right manner? So your trolling is your teacher. It's going to tell you what's out there. It's going to tell you where to cast. So anytime uh, people say that it's unsportsmanlike, Jeff, you just say that the reason you don't troll is because you don't know how. We're going to use some tools that was designed before World War II and put in production in about 1946. Before that time, uh, they, they were made by hand for, for Buck Perry. Then after he had a lot of time on his hands uh, following the World War, so he, he was getting, and even before, he had handmade jobs. But after, after the war, he made a few dies and started making some, some of these uh, home machines. This is called a spoon plug. It's a, a tool designed to control your depth and speed at the same time. The sizes were made to control the depth. The, the design was such to control the action. And of course, just color is in them. But the main ingredients is cr control the depth and speed of the lure on, on or around the features of the bottom the fish use in their movements and migrations. Then the best teacher of all is what makes a fish tick and how to put him in a boat is trolling. So that's what we're going to do, the basic. We're going to start out with this small one. Terry, I want you to hold the lure up. We're going to move into the shoreline. We're going to let out about, uh, about that 90, 100 feet of line, 80, 90, 100 feet of line. If you're using uh, the Nobo line, uh, you go about three colors back or two colors. If it's a crooked shoreline, you better not go more than two colors, only small lures. That would be about, say, 60 feet, 50 feet, something in that mile. It would be uh, about uh, 10 layers on the reel. And we get into, we get as close to the shoreline we get, or as close to the weed line we can get if the weeds are there. And you move into the, this little lure, run about three to, uh, two to three feet. It's, it's going to check out the shallows. And you move in until the lure is uh, just as close as you can get to, we, to the shoreline or the other. When it starts bumping, you're hitting the bottom or picking up the weed, then you just slowly. Now, what I emphasize, slowly. Most people over control when they're trolling. You don't do it. You make corrections slowly. So you slowly, so then as soon as you feel it uh, bumping the bottom or hit starting to hit the weeds or you see the bottom or you see the rocks or something like that, then you start moving out just a little bit. And you keep feeling your way around and the, pretty soon you're contouring that whole shoreline, which is about a mile long. Now you, 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 you've worked that water, you check out the speeds, you go a little while down that shoreline for several hundred yards, or and uh, or go around to the point there, and then you don't, and then you check out the increase of speed just a little bit. You start your speed with the, the lure acting. Put it down beside the boat. Look at the action; it's wiggling pretty good. Then you, as you go, check it out. Then you increase the speed. Pretty soon you got to uh, get up to four, four or five miles an hour, and even in the hot weather, you might be going to six or seven miles an hour. 
but you check your speeds as you go around there. If you don't hit one, then you're going to have to check a little deeper. Now, as far as I'm concerned, when I do that, there's no fish there. I've had plenty of people to tell me that uh, the buck, you say buck, uh, buck says he's had plenty of people to uh, say when he gets way out in the lake, casting out in the lake, he'll say, uh, the fellow will turn around and says, well, why aren't you ca uh, fishing back, why aren't you casting back yonder or trolling back yonder or casting back yonder toward the shoreline the next there was weed line. Now his reaction to this is says, there are no fish back there. The guy says, well, how do you know there's no fish back there? I just got through fishing it. Now if you don't hit one, he's not there. That's our guideline. So we want to go a little bit deeper. The next little put on is what, don't ask me about my number system. And it's 400 series. You don't have to remember, this is the next size. Now, this lure will run about uh, four to six feet with a medium line, say from uh, 60 to 90 feet, something like that. So you move into the lure, start touching the bottom, or you see the weed line, or you pick start to pick up a weed, so then you slowly maneuver it out. You continue this and just uh, to get back in the cove, you, 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 you will move in there where you just get in there and, and as close as you can, and then come on up the shoreline, you move in to start tipping. And then you slowly turn it out till it starts running free. Then you slowly move it back toward the shoreline, the shallows, until it starts tipping again. Then you slowly turn out till it starts running free again. And as you look at it, that will follow the contours of that particular area. When you came to this point, say with that 400, when you started around there, it, it still just kept tipping, tipping, tipping. So you went on around. Then it started running free, and you found out that you had to swing back pretty fast uh, to get it back in there tipping again. Now, as you're doing this, you're keeping your eyeballs open. You're looking at the terrain, you're looking at a lot of things. You don't want to get lost. You don't ever go out there and fish blind. You know where you are at all times. So in this case, we have fished now, and uh, that strained that water out to a depth of about six feet. Then we put on the next size, which is a 250. This lure will take you down to about uh, about uh, about six to nine feet, according to how much line you got back. But it kind of runs out at nine feet. This will take you to, to, and you move into where it just start tipping, and when it start tipping, you start turning it out. And if you continue to do this type of movement, you're going to contour the whole bottom. And you, there it is. Now, remember the bar that the fish move on, on movement on, on structure. If you looked at that uh, shoreline there, you remember the deep uh, shore. The shallow is eight, 10 feet, and when we got through with that 250 that went out to eight to nine feet, we had fished the shallows. Now we're going to have to fish in between and deep, see where the fish are. And if you do that correctly on the troll, and check your speeds and keep lures in position and don't catch fish, he isn't there. They, they often ask the question is, what do you mean by a lure in position? If a lure says run five feet or six feet, you try to keep it in five, six feet of water. If a lure runs to 18 uh, to 15 feet, you try to keep it in 15 feet of water. You know, that's a good guideline to go by. So what we're going to do here, we're going to control the depth on this thing by, by the lures as they run to different depths, and that way we're going to uh, uh, be able to uh, to fish the different depths uh, with by controlling the, uh, the size of a lure. Side. We have finished, in this slide, we have finished the shallows. 
Now it's at this stage where our presentation of lures begin to change. If you look at it, this is where the fish begin to change. If you remember the movements of the fish, when they moved up, they used the bottom as a guide. Then they scattered into the shallows. And we come to this point that when you get to, to, to this point, the bottom is our guide. This is the slide change here. There, we're on the 200 series now. This shows from now on the bottom is our guide because that is the guide of the fish. That's where he's either right at it, he's on it, or he's moving very close to it. And so we put on the next lure. We wanna, we'll come on later and tell you about it. We want to try to keep these passes as straight as possible when we get here. That, those passes there, those three passes, doesn't mean that uh, that's all the, is the only way that you run it. You could run it catacorded, you could cross it, but you want to be sure now that you cover the ground and you want to be sure if it's clean that your lures work directly on the bottom. The lure will walk like nobody's business and it's deadly when you're downstairs. It could be that if the fish are from this on downstairs, if your lure comes swimming by them freely, they may not pick it. But if they come bumping, then every one of them might take it. Every one of them try to gobble it up. A lot of bottoms are dirty where you can't bump it because your lure will get foul with debris and muck and stuff. So you got to work just as close to the bottom as possible. This makes it a little more difficult, but uh, that's all. You, that's the only thing you have left. But the, you you take this lure, which runs down to about 12 feet with line length, pretty long, say 100 yards or more, and 100 yeah, 100 feet or more, and you can work down 12 feet all right with this lure. But as you come across it here in deeper water, we want to keep our past the straight, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Work down. This gets us down to around 12 feet. We bump the bottom, made the path, bang, 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 bumped across the top, so it started running through, we turned around and went back. We were through. We came back uh, again, and we bumped, bump, bump across the bar, and as soon as it started running free, we were through. So we come back again, bump, 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 then that was uh, it. That got us down to about 12 feet. If there's fish in there, we had to find out. The next lure is the 100 series, and this takes us down to about 15 feet. We made a lot of passes. We make a lot of straight passes in there. We just go all over the bar, but as soon as it starts uh, bump, 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 and then it, it starts running free, we swing around and turn back and pop it in another area. We might come in on the end and go straight in on it. We could, or, uh, and then we run down the sides, or we run around out there and come down the side and walk off the end of it. We do a lot of things that just be sure that we covered the depth down to at least 15 feet with that lure. If any fish in there, you'd have found it out. Here I'll bring in, Terry, we can bring in right here that uh, if, that, uh, if I don't hit any fish there and I'm down to the deepest water, then I'm going to go off and check another one, but I'm going to come back to this rascal right here and check it again. You check them because fish do not move constantly or consistently. You watch the weather and you watch the time of day, you watch the cold fronts, and you watch your water color, <clears throat> and you're going to see uh, uh, that the my interpretation the fish is going to move sometime today. And I'm going to come back and check this thing time and time again. Because this is about the, there's only about three of these things in the lake. Slide. This is a cross section of uh, that area. Now we got the 500 and the 400 and the 250 upstairs. Now when, when you're working out the shallows, you, you could catch the fish on the surface 
you could work, you could catch them on the bottom, you could catch them anywhere. So what we did was we strained that whole section of water from the top to the bottom to down to about nine feet. But when we got outside of that, we did not. We used the bottom as a guide for our lure. Same way over on the right hand side, the deep water. We used the bottom as our guide. That's where we would put the that's where the fish are. This is a little hard for people to do. Now you keep lures in position. Now let me talk about the lures out of position to catch no fish. We may come to this later. A lure out of position will catch no fish. Now the position of the lure is the fact that if you've got a 500 lure which runs about four feet to uh, two to three feet and you're out over 50 feet of water, you're out of position. If you've got a 250, which is uh, right at the break line between eight and 10 feet, and you're in, uh, you're up, uh, up, you're out in, uh, uh, out in the middle of the channel, going down the middle of the channel, you're not going to catch fish. Slide. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. The weed line is that the way you stack the lures, the different sizes, you can see where they're stacked. You can run a 500 up close, 400, right, stack them right on down to you hit outside, and then when you get outside the weed line, then you start working the bottom. If you're over on the steep side, which is uh, the right-hand side, you get them in just as close as you can, right against it, all the sizes. Five. Now we've worked down to a 15 of that, but with a 100, but many times you're going to have to go deeper. So, well, in order to go deeper, we're going to have to go to, to, let me, let me say, we're going to have to go to, let me back up here, Terry. This, this, where we are is a deeper, we're talking about deeper with a question mark. We're going to have to go deeper. Now we're down to about 15 feet, or a little better, maybe down to 17 feet to 100, around 15 feet. Now the thing to keep in mind, this is a psychological thing as well as a, it's a mental thing as well as a, a mechanical thing that people as fishermen start having problems of at the 15 feet. They're just a little bit scared. to go deeper. And most of the time, if you want to fish an area or struck a situation, you have to go deeper. Because for simple reason that you better go to the fish, he may not come to you. That's the way they move. You go to 15 feet and that rascal, due to weather and water condition, they move to 20 feet. And that then turn around and went back downstairs 35 feet. Trouble begins there. Five. So we're going to have to go to larger lures or weighted lines, or in our case, we'll go to a, a, a steel line, a wire line, or we have to go to cast it and let it sink. But we have larger lures, and we the larger lures will take us down to to the 700 and 800, take us down to uh, 20, 25 feet. Those are thicker lures. You put, put though, and when you go to a wire line, you can just figure you're going to double the depth of everything on there. Then to get double the depth, then you want to get deeper, you run a long line and let it, the lure sink uh, with the wire. And when you get downstairs, you start to troll or to retrieve, and it'll stay right there. Slide. Let's say that when we made that pass, at the 15 feet, we hit a fish. We can continue to troll it, but you got to remember that you're going to, if you're trolling, you're going to eat up a lot of time. 
not so much that you're going to spook the fish, that sometimes you may be so shallow that you would spook them, but you're going to eat up time because he's not going to be there all day. So the wise thing to do is to immediately go to the cast. You may make, you hit one fish, and you hit a fish, you throw a marker, and you know about where it is, so then you make another pass to, to verify where the, you made the contact with the fish, and then you go to the cast. And when you go to the cast, you anchor just as shallow as you can, slide. You anchor just as shallow as you can in order to reach where the fish were. In order on the cast to deep with us, uh, you use two type lures, a jump lure and a free running bottom bumping lure, which is spoon plug. You can make the cast, let it sink. Keep tension on the line. Do not turn it loose or you'll have to foul up the line with the hooks. Let it sink. Let it sink and try to cast beyond the fish. Then it, as it sunk, it created a bow in the line. So you took up reel until you sunk the line, until you felt the lure downstairs. Just as you see there, the line was sunk. Then you start to retrieve, fast retrieve. Don't mess around with a water, bottom one lure. You've got a spoon plug on now. And you make it walk right up through those fish. That's when you really make time. You, when you get into that, you've got to put them in a boat because you don't have much time to get them to make hay. If after they quit or if you have to it seem like they've dropped deeper, then you go to a jump lure. This is a slow jump lure. So you throw it out, sink it, jump it, let it sink back to the bottom. Jump it, let it sink back to the bottom. That gives you a slow speed but still maintaining depth control. If you just speed a jump lure up like a jig or a plastic worm, it won't even stay there. You're going to lose depth control. So the thing to do is just jump it, let it sink back, jump it, let it sink back, jump it. Or just let it crawl along, just drag along the bottom. But if you do that, you don't have quite enough speed control. Slide. This is what we're after. I could tell some stories about how many consecutive fish of big fish that I've caught without missing one on the cast after I located the school. After we learn the lake, that is that lake, uh, uh, top view of the lake. After we learn the lake, then we can slide, we can go to our structure situation where we know the fish are moving, and we anchor the boat and we bypass the troll. <coughs> cast the shallows. Both check the speed, two type lures. Check the deep water, two type lures. Fast retrieve, bottom, and also jump type lures downstairs. If you don't catch the feet, fish at that time, then you're going to have to exercise patience because you've already established the fact that the fish use this as a migration toward the shallows. Slide. Casting and trolling, basic rules, less than eight, 10 feet, shallows, work all sections, follow contour. More than eight, 10 feet, deep water, work to bottom, keep past the street. Both zones, each lower in position. Slide. Here's the basic guideline. I'm not gonna carry, I'm not gonna read the, all of that thing, but uh, it, I'm gonna send you copies of this and so when you put this slide on, I want them, I want you to pass out copies of this basic guideline and read it. Now, when you come down is what is involved here in successful fishing. This is what is involved here. This is a home study course and the educational material that we have. But in that top section, this is what you emphasize. The whole ball of wax after you say above, because we just showed about the movement of the fish. If you and I desire to consistently catch fish whenever and wherever we go fishing, we must control the depth and speed of our lures, our bait, on and or around the bottom features, structure breaks, break lines, the fish used in their movements and migrations. That is the whole ball of wax of successful fishing. You can bring in all the garbage in the world that you want to, but it boils down to the fact that if we want to consist catch fish, that's what we have to do. So on, down through here, uh, the different types of fish that this thing works. That's the main thing. And it's showing that more.
the different sized fish. There's old Carl Moss with that big musket. He likes to catch those rascals. Here's Don Nichols and them with walleyes in northern. And uh, here's the, uh, this is, I think at the, uh, we lost the uh, old Herb this past, uh, past about a year ago. Herb was one of the great Florida fishermen. I think that's the fish, the 13 pounds or so, close to 14 pounds. He, he taught more people how to catch more big Florida bass than anybody I know. Here's Jerry. She, that's her 11 and a half pound uh, golden, <laughs> golden walleye. And this is some of the spoon pluggers on a networking event, and uh, and it's. Uh, some of our club members in Tennessee and Chicago, I'll see there.